So I'm here to present our NACO paper on entity linking, especially in the context of social media, for example, microblocks. So this is a joint work with uh, Dr. Chen from Microsoft Research. So first, let me briefly introduce our problem. So uh, we are working on entity linking microblock. Given a short message, such as a tweet or a Facebook message, we want to ma map entity mentions in this message into some predefined entities. For example, entries in Wikipedia. Every entry in Wikipedia can be considered as an entity. Here is one example. Suppose we are given this uh, tweet, then we want to recognize US and Clinton as entities in Wikipedia. So in particular, we are interested in a few types of popular entities, such as person, location, organization, product, and so on. And we are also doing this in an offline setting. Basically, this means that uh, we collect a set of tweets in advance, and we do all the processing offline instead of doing it in an online streaming setting. Why is entity linking so important? The motivation of our problem is to enable intelligence gathering. For example, in market analysis, if we want to do some sentiment analysis for a product, we first want to locate those tweets that containing this product, containing mentions to this uh, product entity. However, if we only uh, search or get those tweets based on keyword matching, it's going to be ineffective because of the ambiguity in the keywords. So there are two particular challenges in, in social media messages like tweets. First, they are noisy and informal. So if we apply in-depth NLP analysis, it's going to be difficult. And the second thing is that tweets are generally very short. So we don't have sufficient context to make, uh, to disambiguate the words. So let, let's look at one example. So the word Washington is a very common keyword for three different entities. One is uh, Washington DC, the capital of the US, and the other is the Washington state. And possibly it's, it also refers to a sports team. And another example is the keyword uh, Spurs. So this keyword alone, it can actually refer to two different sports teams. One is a basketball team in the US, and the other is a, actually a soccer team in the UK. So if we just use the keyword Washington to retrieve tweets, to match tweets, we will get an intensity profile over Washington, uh, in this case over the course of one month. But uh, there are a few questions about this. Are these different peaks refer to different entities, whether they are referring to the state or the capital or the sports team, it's unclear. And the second thing is that, does a single peak in this intensity profile means a single entity or different, a mixture of different entities? It's also unclear. So in our approach, uh, we propose to use uh, leverage spatial temporal signals associated with trees to improve entity linking. So let me first share our observations and the intuitions. The first intuition is that uh, the prior of the entity actually changes over time or space. So let's look at an example here. So the mention of Spurs in the US, actually 90%, 91% of the mention Spurs means the basketball team. But in the UK, the same mention uh, that means the basketball team is only correct in 8% of the cases. And the, the similar observation can be observed for different time periods. In some time periods, one entity is more prominent than the other. 
And the second intuition is that we have different surface forms, and some surface forms are easier to, to do entity linking. So let's look at another example. So we have two possible surface forms. One is Clinton, the other is Hillary Clinton. So obviously, Hillary Clinton is a very, is a much easier uh, task than Clinton alone, which can mean either Hillary Clinton or uh, Bill Clinton. So we are going to exploit uh, intertreat interactions to, to use those easier surface forms to help those uh, harder surface forms. So here is our formulation. Basically, uh, in traditional entity linking, we, we just predict an entity based on, the, based on the message itself and the anchor text, which is a surface form. But here we introduce two additional conditions, which is the time when this message is published and the location, that is uh, where this message is published. So by doing some uh, manipulation, we make a conditional independence assumption here, which says that given an entity, how it is expressed or, uh, I mean how it is expressed is actually independent of its time or location. Of course, this isn't true in every cases, but uh, we make this assumption uh, in general because uh, how an, an entity is expressed is much more influenced by the entity rather than by the time or location. And the intuition of our formulation is to leverage entity uh, priors across different time or location. So our intuition is that if an entity uh, is prior at a given time and location is higher than its unconditioned prior, then we make that entity more likely to, uh, to happen. So let's look at this uh, formulation. So in this uh, formulation, which, is, uh, which was presented in the previous slide, we have three different terms. The first term is to predict an entity based on the message and the anchor text itself. So we can actually use some existing model that do not model spatial temporal signals to uh, capture this term. And the last term is actually the uh, prior of this entity. And uh, we, can, we actually use Wikipedia page view statistics to estimate this uh, term. So the major problem now is the, the time and the location conditioned entity uh, prior. And there are two challenges in associated with this uh, estimation. The first challenge is that we do not have large scale entity annotations. So it's difficult to resort to a fully supervised method. So instead we use a, a unsupervised method or, or maybe we call it a weakly supervised method. So first we use an existing model which we call it a base model to tag unlabeled tweets. These tweets are given with time and location information. Second, using those uh, labels given by the existing model, we aggregate tweets tagged with a specific entity for, for any given time and location. Then we update the prior of this entity conditioned on the time and location using those aggregated tweets. And after we have this estimated, uh, after, after we have updated the, the prior, we update the model. And uh, interestingly, once we have the updated model, we can apply it to the unlabeled tweets again. So this is actually an instance of block coordinate ascent algorithm. And if you are interested in the formalization, you can uh, look it in our paper. The second challenge is uh, the time and the location information are continuous in nature. So how do we handle this uh, continuous time and location? So basically we use uh, discretization into beams. Uh, for example, for time, we uh, 
divide them into fixed intervals, such as every day or every hour or every half an hour and so on. For locations, we divide it into uh, grids according to the longitude and uh, uh, latitude. So granu uh, one issue with the bin approach is the granu granularity. How do we set the gra granularity? If the, we have a very small bin size, then the danger is that we do not have enough samples in a bin. However, if we have a very large bin, the signals, the spatial temporal signals in each bin becomes more blurred and less useful. So our solution is to use a small bin size, but we use a smoothing to resolve the issue of insufficient samples in each bin. So how do we do smoothing? First, uh, let's look at how we can model the writing process of a tweet. We assume that there is an epsilon chance, epsilon probability to spontaneously write a tweet by oneself. On the other hand, there is a one minus epsilon probability to imitate a tweet in a nearby time or location being. So this imitation behavior is due to the propagation effect on social media. So imitate uh, which being do we choose to imitate follows a polynomial decay, which means that the farther the being, beings are, the less likely we will choose that being. So we can organize the beings into a network. The beings will be interconnected based on their distance in time or location. So basically we can obtain a smoothing model whereby we smooth the entity prior in each being using its neighbors on the graph. And uh, furthermore, we make an additional conditional independence assumption on the time and the location. So basically, if we uh, use beings over time and the location jointly, we have a, a data scarcity problem. Uh, so here we assume a conditional, conditional independence of the time and the location. So we use beings over time and the location separately. So finally, let me present some empirical results. So first, let me uh, describe the data set. We use uh, tweets from a uh, one month period during December 2012, and we focus on tweets from verified users only. This is because tweets from regular users are uh, noisier, most of them containing small talks, so they are not really helpful in uh, they do not really contain a lot of entities. And uh, we only keep tweets in English and uh, those with locations in the United States. And we discard retweets because retweets has, have a different spatial temporal behavior. So if we include retweets, it will skew the spatial temporal signals. So in the end, we have 1.8 million in total. So these 1.8 million tweets, we only reserve a small s set for testing and development. The rest are treated as unlabeled data for use in the, uh, for the bootstrapping process. <laughs> so we, we adopted two evaluation methodology. The first is a traditional IE evaluation. Basically, we uh, uniformly sample 500 tweets. Half of them is used for development and uh, the rest is used for testing, and we use a uh, macro F measure to, uh, to evaluate the entities extracted from tweets. The second is what we call IR-driven evaluation, because uh, entity link linking is actually important for many business applications, such as sentiment analysis for a product. So in this case, we only care about the target product entity. We don't care about all the other entities. So in this evaluation, we use an information retrieval uh, approach. First, we select 10 query entities. So these 10 query entities, uh, for each of the 10 query entities, we randomly sample 100 tweets for each of them. So in total, there are 1,000 tweets. And we label each tweet to indicate that whether this tweet includes the 
query entity or not. So for the metric, we also use macro F score, but uh, we only consider the query entity. We do not care about the other entities appearing in this treat. And we use two different base systems. The first base system is called the end to end entity linking, which uh, is a supervised method uh, and also a kind of state of the art. The second method is a link probability method, which simply uh, predicts entities based on the uh, anchor text probability in the Wikipedia articles. So our first experiment is to see if the base systems are good enough. So we compare our base systems with two other baselines. So as we can see, the link probability uh, system is uh, quite weak in precision, but actually, but it's surprisingly good in recall. But for the other method, the end-to-end, end-to-end entity linking, it's very good in precision and uh, not so bad in recall. So uh, in the end, we have a uh, best F1 score for E2E in, the, in, in terms of the four base systems. Then let, let's study is the, are the spatial temporal signals useful? So as we can see in both evaluation settings, if we apply time, time or location information, our F score is actually going to benefit. And uh, in particular, for, for the uh, E2E case, if we use both time and location information, we can have a significant improvement. But in the LP method, so if we use both types of signals, the improvement is limited because our guess is that the link probability method is quite noisy. They have low precision. So using more signals may, not, may propagate more errors. And another thing is that if we look at the uh, precision and recall, basically for using spatial temporal signals, the precision doesn't hurt. It stays as high as the base system but we have significant improvement in the recall. And next, let's look at graph-based smoothing. So here we have four, four different strategies. First one is the base system, then followed by the optimal bin size. We tune the size of the bins on the development set and choose the optimal size. Then we use the fine granularity for the bin size coupled with uh, and the last method is the fine granularity coupled with smoothing. So as we can see, if we apply smoothing, you can obtain significant improvement as compared to the method without uh, smoothing. So lastly, let's revisit the case study I presented in the beginning. So remember that this is a time profile for using the keyword Washington. So we are unclear if this profile is corresponding to one entity or multiples. But if we use entity linking, it's clear that this profile actually corresponds to three different entities. Uh, the different peaks actually represent events from different entities. So in conclusion, we demonstrated that spatial temporal signals are very critical in improving entity linking. And aggregation of many individually noisy tweets may help in the overall case. And at future work, we, we are interested in seeing a more general framework to incorporate more non-textual metadata from social media. And uh, of course, uh, another important direction is to improve the base model. So we actually made some improvement to the base model as well. Yeah, that's all for my talk. Nice talk. Uh, I'm uh, it's very interesting you uh, explore the space and time information for entity linking, but I'm wondering whether this method is only working for the Twitter, this specific domain, or can you apply it in other, like the newspaper or other documents? So uh, I think this is more uh, relevant to the social media because in social media you have time and location information. So where this 
message is postage and uh, where the user is. But in but other, but others, this information also exists in other documents, right? Yes. When you write a newspaper, you know it's it's reports the events. You know yes. the time. Yeah, so, but the problem in newspaper is that they actually have very long, uh, long, they have enough content to make the decision even without using spatial temporal signals. So you have a lot of con context in every newspaper article. So uh, it's probably easier to do entity linking. So the incorporation of time and, uh, time and location information probably isn't that crucial, but I suspect that they can still be useful. Okay, okay. thanks. Yeah, thank you for the nice talk. Um, actually, I have two questions. First, how you estimate that like time-based prior or time-spatial-based prior? I mean from 1.8 million tweets, right? This is what you said? Uh, yes. And these are not annotated, right? These are unlabeled without any annotation. Unlabeled. No, 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 unlabeled, unlabeled. Huh? Unlabeled, yes. Yeah. So my, my comment or question here, because we had similar ideas and we have a paper coming in a workshop in CIKM, so we used um, Wikipedia page views per day to get a, an estimate for like time-based prior score. Yes. So how do we, we think this would work for, for Twitter as well? So in our exploration, we actually find out that the, the spatial temporal behavior of Wikipedia isn't exactly the same as uh, uh, Twitter. So there may be some delay in time or uh, some inconsistency in the Wikipedia and the Twitter data. So I think it's still better if, you, if we can leverage the time and the location information from the tweets directly. Uh, yeah, possibly. Yeah, uh, probably one difficulty is that the Wikipedia uh, language is very different from the Twitter language, so maybe you have to handle that. Yeah. Hi, uh, actually thanks for the nice talk and uh, actually I like the clever idea about using the time and location to distinguish between different entities. But actually this is a good, I, I was going to ask about this slide exactly. So are looking only for the geotagged tweets? So we actually look at two types of tweets. The first type is uh, those tweets with geotag, like those posted using a mobile phone, they have a GPS coordinates. The, the other type is using their profile information. So if they, we can't obtain a GPS coordinates, then we uh, load their profile, and many, some people will write their uh, location in the profile, and we map that location to a coordinate. So what is the percentage of this and this in your test set, or your training set? So for, for the GPS tagged tweets, that's about only 5%. And for the location, pro, uh, location from the profile, it's about 30%. And uh, there is a difference in the, the results between both sets because I, I have just a problem that the geotag tweets is only less than 1% of the stream of tweets. So it would be bad if this approach is only applicable for 1% of the stream. But if you are using the profile, this goes up to 50% for who those who write a uh, good yes. profile. Uh, uh, location. So there is a difference in the results between both? I, I think this is a very interesting aspect to study, but unfortunately in our experiments we didn't uh, separate them, we just treated them as the same. Okay. Yeah. So it would be interesting to know the difference. Yes. Yeah. 